Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. Greta Thunberg was in Montreal on September 27th, 2019. And I have to say, I was very happy to see her smile and tell a joke for change. For a moment, she seemed like a typical young person. On her Twitter account, we also see reports of her traveling across North America. She looks relieved and like she's having fun, and that's good. People should feel relieved. 500 scientists have told the UN Secretary General that there's no climate emergency. That's fantastic news. But many people are reluctant to consider it. So far, only one mainstream media outlet, The Guardian, has covered the story. They attempt to smear the signatories as deniers without even addressing the contents of the letter or the exceptional accomplishments of many of the signatories. Also in The Guardian, there's this video of Greta and the anti-capitalist George Monbiot doing a creepy kind of duo, claiming that trees are magical machines that suck carbon from the air so as to save the planet, plant trees. George also makes a pitch about voting and funny how that same day Justin Trudeau promised to plant a billion trees in Canada, one of the most treed countries in the world, where the forestry industry plants millions of trees every year anyway. You think he was jumping on Greta's bandwagon? Just asking. The thing that makes me feel nervous about this connection is that George Monbiot is the guy who has promoted the idea of you having a personal carbon ration. And this is at the same time that James Hansen, the activist scientist of the U.S., is pushing the idea that you'd get more money in rebates if the carbon tax was higher. More of your own money, that is. More of your own money back. Can you understand that this would make you an energy prisoner, beholden to the state and to whoever owns access to the energy of the world? Climate change is a real thing, and humans do affect climate in many different ways. But, as the 500 scientists say, there's no climate emergency. So, why a carbon tax? It's time to smile again, to have some fun, to think very carefully about how energy has given us so many freedoms, like the freedom to fly and see the world. But will that be taken from you with a personal carbon ration? One of the early proponents of the climate movement is Bill McGibbon. In his alarmist book, The End of Nature of 1989, he foresaw Americans rarely traveling, seeing the world only by internet, growing their own food, powering homes by wind and solar, and diverting our wealth to other countries, providing a moral example to countries like China to accept a grand bargain on clean energy. China is a dictatorship. They have a population of a billion people. While we deindustrialize in the West and literally become powerless with virtually useless wind and solar, China is ramping up. They're building a vast transportation complex across Asia to Europe, and they're very active across Africa. They have bought whole seaports in various countries of the world, and they've recently sent troops into democratic Hong Kong. You think they'll respond to a moral example from the West on climate change? Or should we wonder who and what's behind the climate movement to deindustrialize Western nations? There's no climate emergency, and maybe we should wake up. Let's follow the 500 scientists to sanity and reason. Let us unite behind this science. And let's let our kids go free, go back to playing outside in the sun, telling jokes and dreaming of big adventures in their long lives ahead. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.